Welcome to an incredible journey with internationally renowned lawyer of attraction, Paula Kidd Casey. Applying the skills gained over 40 years of practicing law, Paula uses facts, logic, and science to prove the validity of the law of attraction. Join Paula each week as she explores unique concepts, allowing you to rediscover the wisdom of the ancient masters, all while weaving in the science that proves magic really does happen. If you yearn for a life change or want to rediscover your passion, then share the path with Paula and begin to love your journey every step of the way. This is Paula Kid Casey, and you are listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network and to my show, The Law of Attraction. Welcome. I am so glad you're here, and I'm especially glad you're here today because I have, woohoo, one of the most amazing guests on today, Mike Dooley, the New York Times bestselling author of Infinite Possibilities, the Notes from the Universe, the Universe himself, and I cannot tell you how excited I am that I get to have him on my program today. But before I introduce him and bring him on, I want to tell you how he has influenced me and how that has kind of propelled me to where I am right now. So those of you that have listened to me before may have remembered this story, but if you haven't, I'm going to tell it to you and you, the rest of you get to listen to it again. But as you probably know, I was a kick-ass, meaner than shit, extremely successful divorce attorney. You know, I made a lot of money, but we had a lot of possessions and a lot of debts and a lot of mortgages. And, you know, I just kept going on and on and on. And, you know, maybe my, my mind would not accept this, or maybe my, my body would not accept this, but, but my soul knew somewhere deep inside that I could not continue to go on that trajectory that I had been on for what, 30 years at that point in time. And so one day in 2005, 2006, I literally, I thought I was having a heart attack. I had pain erupting from my chest. I could not catch my breath. I literally thought I was dying. I, I've never felt that bad in my life. And I yelled out to my husband, I was home at the time, I think I'm having a heart attack. You've got to take me to the emergency room. And he yells back, can you wait until halftime? Because <laughs> the Super Bowl was on. But you know what? Not waiting to halftime, he runs me. He runs me to the emergency room, and you know, six months later, they have ran every test they could think of, and they sit down to tell me that there's absolutely nothing physically wrong with me. That you know, I was having anxiety attacks, it's stress. Well, that did not go over well with me because, you know, I'm in control of everything and surely I can control my emotions and surely I can control, you know, the stress that's in my life. But, you know, and they told me there was nothing they could do for me. And it took me months until I realized that the only person that could do anything for me was me. And I tried a lot of things. The medicine didn't really help. I tried cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a a great area of psychology and it and it's a good basis but you know i i was searching for something else and i tell you what my my saving grace was was books because back then we didn't have podcasts and we didn't have youtube and you know we didn't have i didn't know of any seminars to go to i didn't know of anybody that was actually preaching this information you know the secret hadn't even come out at this point in time but i knew that there was something more my soul was saying there's something more. You need to find something. And I'm thinking there's something outside of myself. But what I realized is there's something inside of myself that I needed to get in touch with. And, you know, that's my soul. That's my spirit. Well, for the next five or six years, all I did, every book I could get my hands on to, because that was really the only source that I knew of to get to this information. And I used to say that there was a Barnes and noble angel because every time i'd go in there i would get the exact right book you know i read everything i could in this genre eckhart tolle the power of now and deepak chopra and neil donald walsh and you know anybody i could think of uh, and i got my hands on their book i would just devour it well when i was reading these i remembered you know i remember some of these books that i read in the 90s and it was the celestine prophecy and the the conversations with god books by neil donald walsh and i love them and they touch something but they were weird (laughs) 
you know, and, and I wanted them to be true. And I'm not even sure what it was that I thought was true in them, but I love them and I read them. And, you know, and when I'm going through this, I now call it my metamorphosis, but when I was going through this, my trial and tribulations of trying to figure out, you know, why I was having these horrible anxiety attacks, but also, you know, why I wasn't really that happy, what I was searching for. I'm, I'm searching for something more that I remembered I'd read these books in, in the 90s and I got him out and I, I find this one book and it's called Notes from the Universe and I must have bought it in the early 2000s. I don't remember buying it. I don't remember reading it, but it was Mike Dooley's book, Notes from the Universe. And he he has a daily email and if you haven't signed up for it, it's it's pretty darn amazing. And it basically... Uh, it's free and he put, has you put your name and a couple of your, you know, your desires, your goals. And every day he sends you this email that says, hi, Paula. Well, yours will say something different, but, you know, and he'll say, you know, a, an inspirational quote or, or something that makes you laugh. It's poignant. It's, it's kind. It, you know, it, it really helps. And he, he had compiled those into this first book of his notes from the universe. And I, I remember looking at it going, I, I don't even remember buying it. I'm not even sure who he is. I kind of put it on the back burner. Well, you know, jump ahead about, I don't know, five years. I have now read hundreds of books. Um, you know, I'm loving it. It has calmed me down. It has, you know, I, I figured out how to de-stress to some degree. And I, I'm taking a walk in my beautiful neighborhood. Well, for those of you that have read my book or or have heard me before, I would call it my wonder walk because I wanted to get back into nature. But what it ended up being was this horrible worry walk because I wouldn't get like a half a block down the street when that monkey mind would jump on board and have a party. And instead of just appreciating the trees and the, the little lakes and, and you know, that we have a little waterfall and how beautiful it was it, what I would I do? I would start worrying about what I had in court that day, what I what my cases were, what I was going to argue, and then I would figure out what the other side was going to argue, and then I would get mad at the other side for arguing that. Okay, now, nobody's there except me. It's just my mind doing all these things, and I would worry about debts, and I would worry about people that owed me money, and, you know, I, I, I was just nuts. I was not paying attention to the now. I was not living in this beautiful area and, and enjoying nature. I was I was just letting my mind get totally carried away. Well, I had learned to control that to some degree. So this particular day in 2011, I'm taking a walk and instead of, you know, looking down at the, at the sidewalk and worrying about stuff, I was paying attention. I, I looked up, I was paying attention to everything that was around me. And I see this woman that, that come to find out she's lived in the neighborhood three or four years. She takes walks all the time. I'd never noticed her. And I make eye contact with her. And it, I re remember her. She had been a client of mine about 14 years before. And one of the reasons I remember her is because I was so impressed with her. She had a little one, um, you know, and she wanted this divorce. And she didn't let me get her spousal support or child support. You know, she wanted to make it on her own. And, you know, she was kind and she had integrity. And I always, I, she was one of those that always stuck out. And when I saw her, Oh, I, you know, I want to say something to her. And we made eye contact and we started walking together. And as we're walking this one time, she's telling me that about a, a, a note that she got from the universe. I'm kind of laughing like, oh yeah, like the universe writes you an email. And she tells me about the Mike Dooley one and how you get signed up. And I had not done that. I had just seen that I had that little book that he'd written. So I said, great. So I go home and I sign up and I start getting the notes and um, I, I meet my friend again and it was Sonia and here's a shout out to Sonia cause she's been a very dear friend and you know, we're walking and I say to her, you know what? I have figured out this is what I want to do with my life. This is my purpose. I want to teach this stuff. I want to, this is my passion. I'm just not exactly sure what it is, how you put it together because you know, Eckhart Tolle tells you about the power of now and Deepak Chopra tells you about the seven spiritual laws and I and if it was out there, I hadn't found it. Something that actually just put it together, that, that you know, can, made it into a concise program. But I knew that I wanted to teach it, and I knew I wanted to find that program. And I put that out, and I said that to Sonia. And within, within literally a month, I get an email from Notes from the Universe from Mike Dooley that says, hey, I've decided I want to put together a workshop, and I want people to come here, and I want to teach them how to become trainers of this workshop. I want to teach them 
to be able to go take this workshop and take it out to other people. I went, woohoo, you know, this is what I want within 30 days. You know, that old universe literally and figuratively answered, answered my request. And I went, okay, I'm going. So I signed up. I went to Orlando in October of 2011. I think there were 80 to 100 of us there at that point in time. And Mike was funny. It was the first time he'd had this conference to, to train people to teach his workshop. And I remember the first night I see him, he's kind of by himself and I go over and talk to him and we laughed and, you know, we had the same, same, same favorite book and, you know, I, we, we just got along and, and he, he's been very dear to me since then and he's been such an inspiration. So when we get done with that workshop, the call to action was we needed to go and we needed to teach six people this workshop and it was six lessons. And after that, you could become a certified trainer after you do that. So this was on a Sunday and I go home, I go, I'm doing this immediately. And I call my two friends because I only had two friends. <laughs> I didn't have six friends, but they were kind enough, bless their hearts, to bring some more people. So I said, I need six people in my dining room Tuesday night. So within 48 hours of when I came home, I had six people and I started teaching uh, Mike Dooley's Infinite Possibilities Workshop. And I loved it and my people loved it. And I taught it many times after that in my dining room with six to eight people after that. And I loved it. And in six months, I was asked to be on the national panel of his Infinite Possibilities uh, workshop, train the trainers. And then in the next six months, I was asked to be on the main stage to be one of the, the speakers on the stage. And he has just helped me propel my life in this direction. And I loved it and I love teaching it. But I wanted to be able to take this information into a boardroom, into a business, into people that needed more documentation and data and evidence. And, and a lot of that is because I'm an attorney and that's what I was used to presenting to people to be able to convince them that something was true. And I loved Mike Dooley's information, but I wanted something more, something deeper, something I could actually take into companies. And so uh, there were like five other women and I, we were trying to put together maybe this corporate program and bless their hearts. I love them all, but literally six professional women trying to do something is like herding cats. And so finally, after like six months, it's a Thursday night. I said to him, you guys, I love you. This is not the direction I want to go. I need to go in another direction. And literally, this is not literally the next morning on Facebook. I see somebody, one of my friends like Bob Proctor, and I said, oh, I remember Bob Proctor. He was from The Secret, and Mike Dooley was also in The Secret, and I said, okay, and, and I hit the Bob Proctor post thinking it's going to go to his Facebook or it's going to go to the website. It goes directly to this page about becoming a consultant for Bob Proctor's program, thinking in the results. Well, and I became a consultant for him. I was a top consultant. I was in his inner circle. Uh, I became, you know, friends with Bob. He's a wonderful person. He actually did a testimonial for me. It's on YouTube. And I loved his program. I taught his program for two to three years. But once again, as we all do, I'm growing. I wanted to teach my own program. I had things I wanted to bring. I wanted to, to take Mike's program and Bob's program and my information and put it together. And I have. And I have started teaching my own program. But I would not be here. I would not be living my passion if it hadn't been for Mike Dooley. Because he really gave me the tools and the inspiration and the motivation and the support that I needed to get going on this. And, and the, the organization of all the concepts into a very simple form that is so understandable but so profound in and of itself. And, and so he has always been uh, beloved by me. He's one of my my most important mentors in my life and I am so pleased to have him on my show today. He has a new book coming out and we're going to talk about that and we will be right back with Mike Dooley. Hi and we're back and we are back with Mike Dooley, one of my very most favorite people of all times. He is the New York Times bestselling author of Infinite Possibilities and Leveraging the Universe. And I have him with me today on the radio show. And I am so thrilled to have you. Welcome, Mike. Hey, Paula. Great to be with you. Thanks for the chance. Oh, thanks so much for being here. So Mike has a brand new book coming out in March. It is called A, Beginner, a Beginner's Guide to Mastering the Universe. So I'm sure that's going to just 
blow the socks off of everybody. And um, he was kind enough to be on my show today to, to tell my, all my readers about that. But before we get to that, I want to kind of get a little bit of background from Mike on, on uh, his, other, his other books and how he kind of got into this whole business, uh, especially your first, first book, Infinite Possibilities. So uh, I have known Mike since 2011, and I was one of his very first uh, trainers on his uh, workshop, Infinite Possibilities. So um, Mike, talk, talk to us about your very first book, which was Infinite Possibilities, but you self-published that, didn't you? And, and um, I remember the story about how you actually cut out words, bestseller, <laughs> and you put it oh, over there. Yeah. I love that. So, so tell, our, tell our readers how you manifested it so they, they can get an idea how they can manifest huge things in their lives. Well, it, it all arose from the uh, dark night of my soul about 20 years ago when I was yet again figuring out my life, starting over in a career, no relationship, limited finances, worried about losing my home. And uh, I, I had this wish that I could receive inspiration, the kind that you now give out, Paula. And I wanted to receive it in, a, in an email. And since I could not find anybody doing any such nutty thing, this is back in the year 2000, um, I thought, you know what? I've got a database of people who used to buy our T-shirts before we liquidated that business. Uh, folks from around the world who visited Orlando, where I live then and now, um, and I had a t-shirt store with my brother and mother. And so we were selling to tourists and we got email addresses when people first started getting email addresses back when most people didn't even have or certainly didn't know their email address. And uh, since I had this database, but no underlying business, and since I wanted to receive emails, I thought, you know, the next best thing is, is to send them. You know, you teach best what you most need to learn, which has always been one of my core underlying beliefs thanks to Richard Bach and so I started sending out emails for Mike which you know admittedly in hindsight were never very popular but they <laughs> evolved into notes from the universe which have become you know wildly popular it's almost 20 years now I've got 800,000 people on the uh, mailing list and um, that that was a free service. It still is a free service. So I had to get really creative and, you know, try to figure out a way to monetize um, my, you know, insights. And again, given where I was in my life, I was going through a lot of kind of pain, self-inflicted pain. And I wanted to get my life going again. I wanted to have income again. I wanted to, you know, feel the truth that I always knew and always put on the t-shirts, for example, that we are the eyes and the ears of the divine, that all things are possible, that dreams come true, that we're pushed on to greatness every day. So I thought, you know, in addition to the emails, let me cobble together an audio program with some tips and tricks from people I had met. And that um, audio program was titled Infinite Possibilities, The Art of Living Your Dreams. It was 12 cassette tapes, uh, ha, 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 and, or 12 CDs. And that's when everybody had cassettes. Very few people had CD players. So it was kind of like the anomaly to send out CDs. But I had to cater to both markets. And over about a year's time, as I was sending out the emails, I was writing about thoughts become things, writing about the power of our beliefs, writing stuff that I needed to really prove to myself. Um, I remember telling myself, you know, it's not about how you got in this mess, Mike. And I accepted full responsibility for it. And I, that's so important for everyone who wants to create change. You got to own where you are. You don't have to explain it, but you have to own it. And I remember thinking, I can't explain it. I thought I was pretty damn wonderful. Uh, I don't know how I created this mess, but I know how to move forward from it. And it was a matter of focusing on end results, not figuring out how to get there. It was a matter of defining the life of my dreams in terms of abundance, friends, laughter, joy, travel, things that matter to me. And um, as I put it out on paper as a script for my audio program and started sending out one recording a month for a year, um, it, it, I really, I 
found I had something that people wanted. I, each recording, I thought to myself, that sucked, but the <laughs> next one will be better. But I had pre-sold all of these. Um, I had pre-sold an annual subscription with 12 installments, 12 audio installments for the year. So I, I had to publish one, self-publish one, and then get on the script for the next one, which would be due in you know less than four weeks. So I had no time to overly criticize myself. Um, everybody had the option to get a money back guarantee and almost nobody wanted one. And in, to the contrary, I would get, you know, my first bits of fan mail. That was the best recording. It was my favorite one. I'd listened to it 10 times and I'd be like, really? I thought it was terrible. But, um, you know, we're often too critical and too harsh on ourselves. And had I not pre-sold, Paula, I never would have had the confidence or the belief in myself that I had something that other people might learn from. So, you know, a lot of lessons were learned um, in the rollout of that program, the self-publishing. And as you said, it later became a book. It became a New York Times bestseller. It led to an invitation to be in the secret. And my whole life changed profoundly from the depths of despair. And you took one step. You didn't know back then what was going to happen. You didn't know how any of this would unfold, but you just, you just jumped in with both feet and, and you took that first action. And, and look where it's taken you. Did you have any idea you would be here this 20 years later? <laughs> you know, the, I, the irony there is I definitely dreamed humongous dreams. I mean, so big that, you know, I could barely say that half of them, and they, those were materialistic, half of them have not yet come true. But when even, even dreams of a smaller nature than your most humongous ones come true, when they come true and you're flying to London to give a talk or to Moscow or to um, Istanbul or to Kuala Lumpur, uh, among the hundreds of cities I've spoken to around the world, when those dreams come true and the money starts coming in, and if I may say, and the money starts pouring in, and you fall in love, and you start a family, and you do things you really kind of, you know, you dreamed of, but you didn't know what happened. When they happen, it's like, oh my gosh. When, it was, when I was waiting for my life to take off, I remember lamenting to my mother while I would bum cigarettes off of her, you know, <laughs> that my life sucked and when's it going to take off and this is no this isn't right and what happened to my thoughts becoming things and why is it taking so long and is it ever going to work um but then in hindsight not only was was everything like so much richer than i imagined um it happened fast in hindsight it's like man that happened fast man within two years i was on a world tour within two years after that i was um, in the secret, which was blowing up in, in every country on earth. Within two years of that, I had a New York Times bestseller. It was like, it happened so fast in hindsight. But when it was happening, it was so slow. And I doubted myself, Paula, so much. It was not like, well, I have a dream and I'm just going to take some, some baby steps because I know this stuff works. It was like, I had a dream. I had no idea if it would work for me. <laughs> I'm, I was plagued with self-doubt, um, never felt like I measured up, never felt like I was good enough, you know, total performance anxiety in front of, uh, on a stage in front of an audience, um, you know, and I think this is another lesson I like to impart to audiences and to my own readers, you know, when you look at somebody you admire or emulate or appreciate or want to model your life after, you know, like an Oprah Winfrey, it seems when you're looking at them after they've made it, oh, well, it was easy for them. Oh, it was meant to be for them. Oh, they had natural gifts that I clearly don't have. None of that's true. I'm sure it was not true for Oprah. I know it wasn't true for me. My mom would say to me, Mike, I admire your courage. You get up on stage. You made this happen. You've got a New York Times bestseller. I admire your courage. And I'd be like, Mom, don't you remember? I would go to your house. Uh, practically sniveling and whining and bumming <laughs> cigarettes, complaining about my life and telling you how much I hated public speaking, how much I trembled in front of an audience, how humiliating it was to go blank, to have cotton mouth, for my knees to be shaking, to my voice to be quaking. It's like I had no courage, Mom. 
And uh, she never really, you know, rest in peace, never. She did get to see all the glory, and I took her all over the world. Um, but she never seemed to remember, the, or maybe I didn't relay to her effectively enough, the fear and uncertainty I had when I was starting out. And I, I tell audiences, you know, it's not like you have to be Mr. or Mrs. Positivity. It's not like you have to have all the answers. It's not like you have to know how your dream's going to come true. In fact, don't go there. You can't know how. You can hope and you can take baby steps and you can create space for even better. But as soon as you mess with the cursed house, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, stress out, bog down, and limit divine intelligence. And, and that is so true. I love your cursed house. We can't tell, figure out the cursed house. The universe does that. But I want to go back to your mom. You were courageous because you were so fearful. You still got up there and did it. You know, I love the story oh. that you self-published and you had, you had a book signing and nobody comes to your book signing except your mom and your brother, Andy. And, and, and you still yeah. did it. And you, and you were hated speaking and you went to Toastmasters. I mean, people need to understand there, there's, there, there, is, there are steps that they have to take that are extremely fearful but Mike, you had so much courage because you went, you went through it. You, you got through it, and 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 oh my well, gosh! I appreciate that. On the other side, I, you, I have, that. you have influenced so many people. Real quick, before we talk about your book, I want to talk about your mom because I I knew your mom and I loved your mom. She's the one that really got you into this metaphysical realm. That really got you thinking yeah. deep thoughts, right? Yes, and uh, and we were super, super, super close my entire life. You know, I mean, really, as an adult, I probably probably never a day went by when I didn't call and say good night or how was your day or something like that, with very few exceptions. And uh, I feel so blessed that way. You know, uh, she was a cheerleader. She was a believer in me when I doubted myself. She was enthusiastic. Uh, she was not perfect by any stretch, but um, but, you know, I trusted her, and I know that she loved me, and not everybody has that. And when she introduced some metaphysical teachings to me first, when I was in college, I really thought she had lost it. She said, <laughs> some of this stuff is channeled by a disincarnate being, and the lady goes into trance, and her husband takes longhand dictation. And that was I, Jane I was Roberts, concerned. Right? Jane Roberts. Exactly. Yeah. The stuff yeah. Material. So I thought, you know, mom, you've lost it. I'm sorry. I feel <laughs> terrible. I, I don't, I can't get home right away. I hope you can wait for the weekend. And she was like, no, just shut up. And she said, listen, read the book I'm going to mail you and judge for yourself <clears throat> the content of what Seth has to say through Jane Roberts and for, and forget the source, just read the content and the content blew me away. I had always been a seeker and a searcher of like, you know, why are we here and what's the point? And is God really pissed off at us? And isn't that juvenile? And I don't get it. And it doesn't make sense. But uh, I drew my own conclusions in the absence of not finding answers as a teenager and in my uh, very early 20s. But when Seth showed up, not only did Seth confirm my own intuition, which is anyone's intuition, you know, like, look, people are doing their best, however poor we may judge that to be. Um, everything has to be of God. Everything is God. It's just confusion that makes us do crazy things. Time has to be an illusion. It can't be real. If you imagine a timeline going to infinity, our lives are meaningless. And so those little conclusions were confirmed by Seth. And then Seth went way beyond what my little mind could do back then and basically said, you are creators. You are of, uh, he didn't use the word divine intelligence. He said, all that is. You are part of all that is and all that will ever be. You're here by choice. You're eternal beings. Time is an illusion. What you, what you focus upon, you create. You are creators of your reality. And what you don't like, you can change. There was no agenda. There was no uh, upsell on the workshop. There was no... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no manipulation. There was no alms to pay. It was just kind of a celebration that, that life is beautiful and everyone's going to get there and everyone's trying their best and you, what you don't like, you can change. And it was like, 
electrifying. And to this day it is. And when I hear truth, when I read truth, when I speak truth, uh, I feel equally electrified. And I think that's why videos or books like The Secret, and hopefully to a degree some of mine, um, do so well. It's because people recognize the truth when they hear it. They, they might not intellectually be able to pin it all down, but they're like, yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I knew that, that life is beautiful. I knew that I'm not being judged. I know that all things are possible. I know I can make my dreams come true. And, and, and so there you have it. We are all of truth. We are all that truth in our DNA, if you will. It, we are not random accidents. We're not um, guinea pigs for God who's going to judge us and sentence us. What a crazy notion. Um, we are the spark of the divine uh, here by choice because we could, because we wanted to, because there's love at every single turn in every single life. Well, and you know, when we hear, when we hear or read something, we're remembering a truth. We already know it. There's just something that has, oh, right. that has just brought it up in us. And, you know, you talk about being the Jane Roberts was channeling Seth, but you in reality are, are channeling source, the universe, because your notes from the universe are just literally inspired, transformational. And isn't that kind of how you write the books? And let's talk about your new book, A Beginner's Guide to Mastering the Universe, because I do want to get to that before uh, I have to let you go because that is like 500 of your notes in the universe that you compiled into this book, right? Yeah. And then you've got eight letters yeah. to your little daughter who's four, who is just gorgeous. And I know yeah. she's the love of your uh, life. So tell us about, tell us about how you, how, how, how you decided to write this book and how you put it together and, you know, give us just a couple of gems from that because it's coming out next next month, and I would love all my listeners to buy that because your books just oh, touch thank, my soul. They're just you, amazing. Paula. Thank you, thank you, Paula. Well, you know, just as you have heard, and no doubt the, your readers have heard, you know, we're all psychic. We are. We're all you know, God particles. We're all connected. We're all one, and some have. Um, fine-tuned that gift some came with that gift blaring others have never used it but we all have that in us by the same exact rationale we're all channels in fact I'm channeling to you right now as you've been alternating and channeling to me the physical body is a channel of our higher energies and some um, are so good at it they can channel from way up high uh, like Jane Roberts and uh, the Abraham material and Richard Bach and others and and other folks maybe more like me um, have to wrestle with it more and I wish I could tell you that my notes from the universe just you know are downloaded and bing bang boom there's three sentences to make you have a better day but uh, they typically take hours and hours uh, three to four to five to six hours to write one. Wow. And um, yeah, they, they, they are channeled, but it's not like I go into a trance and channel them. It's like I summon them. And I think my writing um, and the steps I take for creative writing are a little mini workshop on how to manifest anything. I first, at a, the beginning of a writing session, hold in mind my desired end result. Not how I'm going to get there, but my desired end result. And that is a woohoo, jump for joy. I love what I do. I, I can't believe this is my job. That feeling of elation for having written a good note, that's my end result. That's what I'm after when I sit down to write a new note for the universe. Once I hold that in my mind and I feel the emotion of it in my entire body just for a couple of minutes, I then have no idea of what to say, just like living a dream. I have no idea where to go or what to do, but I do something. I write. I write anything. I write the junkiest, stupidest, corniest thought that comes to mind, and it sucks, and I delete it, and then I edit it, and I rewrite it, and I start over, just like when someone follows a dream to start a business, to find a partner, to improve their health, to have more clarity, to be enlightened, to make a million bucks. 
you hold on to that vision, you feel the emotion of it, you sense the certainty of it, even though you have self-doubt. And then after you've made that impression in your mind, maybe once a day for two minutes in the morning before you go to work, you then show up, knock on doors, do stuff. It'll seem weird. It'll seem insufficient. It'll suck. It'll be embarrassing. Keep going. Do your best to move in the direction of love, joy, abundance, health, healing, harmony, and you will be blown away. Uh, this is like the basis of every quote, you know, the, from Goethe to Emerson to Thoreau to all those ones that excite us, you know, start in the darkness, start without seeing the top of the staircase, start anyway, once you have a dream and keep on flailing and you'll eventually find a track and a groove. And that's how I've written every note from the universe. That's how I've written 15 books. That's how I've written five video courses. That's how I do my work. And so to tie this into my present book, I, um, I was talking with Hay House about, okay, what new projects can I work on? We've already done three books together. And uh, I said, you know, I, I'm a late blooming first time dad. They know that, but your audience doesn't. So um, I said, I, I'm just besotted with my daughter who at the time was two years old and I would love to write something that might be useful to her when she's an adult. Cause I know she's going to wonder uh, not that I won't be around, but she'll wonder at different times, you know, what my dad talks about, what my dad writes about. You know, I know from having a wife, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother, they're the last people on earth to really read my work because they know me. I'm just Mike to them, never a prophet in your hometown. So my daughter will be the same. I'll just be, oh, dad, don't speak them <laughs> things right. Yeah, give me a break. Not. So. I, I thought in this project, I'd really like to be able to distill the best of what I know and the best of what I've written um, for her. And of course, you know, it was never meant to be for her in a shoebox all alone. I'm a writer. I'm an author. You know, I would like this book to be ideal as a gift for any young adult uh, or a reminder for any older adult uh, or you know, a book for everybody where I really simplify thoughts becoming things, the steps to take to transform your life, um, some tricky and hard lessons as well, such as, just comes to mind, um, all pain is self-inflicted. That doesn't mean there aren't jerks out there who, viol who don't violate people. We know that there are and they do. But in the deepest sense of things, if you want to get a handle on your life and totally rock the rest of it and the best of it, you can't be in a place where you believe in victimhood and random chance and bad crap happening to good people. Because they're all creators. And it's a matter of learning how to point that thing to be a better creator so that you can ease on into harmony, splendor, opulence, or whatever your heart desires. So there's some tough love lessons amongst these 500 notes and all of the notes of the 500 have been rewritten. So I'm actually, I've taken them outside of the context of a note from the universe. The email for the benefit of your readers is, um, you know, a daily email that speaks to receivers of it, you know, as if it was their friend of the universe, divine intelligence writing them, jesting them, um, winking at them. And it is. Um, from on high. And it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for this book, I've taken that part of it out. I mean, I still treasure that part, and I still get tickled by that part. And there'll still be notes in the universe. But for these ones that have already been sent out, um, I've rewritten them as just kind of little blurbs of life advice without the frill so that it's just distilled down to the most essential lesson. The book has six chapters. So each chapter begins with a letter to my daughter that anybody will be able to relate to for lessons learned and epiphanies had. And then, then there's probably like 80 lessons that follow the letter for that chapter. The chapters are about relationships and maximizing them about another chapter about making dreams come true, another chapter about um, understanding adversity and 
capitalizing on it and blasting farther, better, higher because of it and seeing the gift in everything. Uh, there's a chapter on what old souls know, not that I am one, uh, but I've learned enough in writing for 20 years and kind of emulating uh, the ideal theoretical time-space life that uh, I think I have some good stuff there. And then there's a prologue and an epilogue. That makes a seven and eight letters. So I'm super excited about it. It's a lot of, uh, it was a labor of love. It was a lot of work, even though it was a lot of rewriting of notes. Um, but I, I feel like it humanized the notes. Um, it tells a story of my, you know, my relationship of my daughter and how at the outset of her life and the book, um, I was almost em embarrassed and, uh, that's not the right word, but kind of so disappointed in myself that that I'll never be the man she thinks I am. Cause you know, it's like having a dog, you know, you've seen the bumper sticker, you know, it's like, she looks at me with wonder and awe, just the way I look at her. And it's like, you know, I just wish that I could be half of the guy that she thinks I am. But then by the end of the book in the epilogue, I, I pick up on that thread again. And, uh, as I, I, I relay a story that kind of left me in tears one day at the science center in Orlando when I was imagining her leaving the nest 20 years from now. Oh. And, uh, and it reminded me of how much I loved her and how much I loved being loved by her. And it, it kind of made me feel like I don't, I don't know how such perfection as her could, you know, see such importance in me. I mean, she's perfect. Um, and then I started to realize that it's in every kid, of course, it's not just my daughter, that's my, uh, my, my little window on reality, that every child is as perfect and divine just as they are. And I love my daughter, will always love my daughter no matter what she becomes, no matter what she has, no matter what hardships or uh, faltering or weaknesses, you know, it's not about that. You have kids. It's, it's not about what they do or don't do or have or don't have or become or don't become. It's just like you just love them for no reason at all, just because because that's just because in our nature. Divine, our, our they're divine. divinity. They're ours. Yeah, they're they are God. They are God. And then I take the reader in the same epilogue, like, look, if it's in every kid, not just my daughter, then it's in every adult. And if it's in every adult, this perfection, this, this, this worthiness of love without so-called merit, doing, being, achieving, then it's got to be in me. And that's a hard one because, you know, we're our own worst critics. And it was like, yeah, but, yeah, oh, man, I, you know, I don't need to go there. I don't. But, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you have to have tough love on yourself. That's right. And uh, the the ultimate epiphany at the end of the book, um, you know, spoiler alert, <laughs> not really. It's just a book of thoughts. But is um, I, I have to be, there's no other way, already the man she thinks I am. I am that guy. I am that. She sees God in me like I see God in her. Oh, and while she'll, deny it, while, while she'll deny it when she's 20 and 30 and 40, <laughs> just like I want to deny it now, it's like, you know, shut up and think about it and realize you don't have to prove yourself, that you're already perfect, that you're already divine, and that life is easy. It's the all, absolute knowable. And if you want to change any circumstances in your life, well, check out these tips in this book. But otherwise, love yourself anyway and don't put either your happiness or your self-appreciation off for not one single more goal, dream, wish, or to-do. Well, you give me goosebumps when you talk. I absolutely love listening to you. I listened to your Facebook Live and I was just enthralled with what this book was going to be. And I wanted to make sure everybody, everybody gets a chance to listen to what you have to say and, and also to read the book. And, and one of the things that, that you said was, you know, uh, life doesn't happen to us. We happen to life. And I, I think you're such an amazing example of, you know, you happen to life and look at how many lives you've changed. But I mean, you just, you, I mean, 
you, you changed your life oh, and some other lives. Oh, and, and and oh. I, I know that that you probably need to go pretty soon. But I I just number one I want to wish you happy birthday tomorrow. I realize your birthday's tomorrow. February oh my 7th. gosh! Thank you! Yay! Yay! And my birthday's February sixteenth, so we're both Aquarians. So yay us! Yay! <laughs> Yes, indeed. So um, I want to thank you so much for being on my program, and I'm going to tell them some more information about you. But thanks so much for being on here, and best of luck for, to your new book. Thank you, thank you. A million thanks, Paula. It was a pleasure. And uh, congratulations on the good work that you're doing. It's exciting. Oh, thank you so much. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you do and uh, we will be right back and we're back woohoo was that amazing I mean he just gives me goosebumps I absolutely love talking to him I love listening to him I love the inspiration and the insights that he gives us you know he talks about speaking truth and he does he speaks his truth and he has allowed me to be able to speak my truth and if there's things that you heard that he said or there's things that you hear that I say that resonates with you, that's because there's a truth inside of you that is yearning to get out. And whatever I can do to help you along your path, whether you're as far along or farther along than I am, or if you're just beginning, man, let's go on this journey together. And, you know, reading Mike's books are such an amazing way to do that. Uh, he also has a program playing the matrix and he travels around the United States and I think he goes to other countries. It's a three day program. You can find it on tut, T U T dot com. Uh, it, get on there. If he's coming to your area, I would encourage you to sign up for that. It's amazing. He's fun. You know, he's sincere. He's, he's, he's just an authentic person. And I, I would encourage you to do that because we are so blessed. Now we have, this form of communication. We can communicate with each other. We can hear other people communicate, other masters, contemporary teachers, that when Mike started and when I started, we didn't really have that. And, and we are so fortunate that, that we have this connection to each other. And, and I want you to reach out to me at paul at lawyerofattraction.com. Give me your feedback. I'd, I'd love to talk to you. Uh, when you get on lawyerofattraction.com, there is a free seven-day set of emails that we're going to send to you. It's called the magic of intention and it's fun and it's quick and literally it takes you about 30 seconds to read an email for seven days. It gives you one thing to do each day. And when you realize that an intention just to do one thing each day can really make a difference, it makes you understand how powerful you really are. Cause if there's one thing I want you to take away from today, from everything is that, you have this amazing power and that power is you get to think whatever you decide to think. You get to choose a thought. You get to choose an emotion and you get to choose an action. And that is what changes everything. You get to make that choice. And when you understand how powerful that is, how our free will, how powerful it is that you can choose a new thought, you understand your connection to divinity which is one of the things Mike is so good at, at getting across, that we are divinity, that the divinity flows to and through us. So once again, I want to thank you for going on this journey today. Uh, it was fun. He's amazing. And I, I would encourage you to get on and buy his, his new book, Beginner's Guide to Mastering the Universe. Uh, and I think it's available next, next month, which would be March. In addition, get on Amazon and buy my book, The Law and the Law of Attraction. It's getting some good reviews. Uh, my book was chosen to be at the Tucson uh, International Book Fair in March. I think it's March 1st and 2nd. It was one of the 50 that my self-publishing house is taking. So I'm going down there. So woohoo, that's exciting. So I would love you to buy the book. It's available on Kindle. And we are coming to the end of the radio show today. But as always, I want to leave you with Ram Das. We are all just walking each other home. We are on this journey together. I would love to hold hands and do it with you. You know, we know there's something more. We know there's something around the bend. We know we are supposed to be here. And I am so honored to have an opportunity to share that path with you. So until next time, this is Paula Kid Casey at The Law of Attraction. Thank you for joining Paula Kid Casey on Lawyer of Attraction radio show. For more information about Paula programs and her book, 
please visit www.lawyerofattraction.com. Until next week, may you experience the magic of manifesting genuine abundance.